Uh, you know what? I'll just say this. The grocery store gonna get mad at me if I complain about the carts not being returned? Wait, what? <laughs> like, if I come on the podcast and complain about something or talk about something, yeah. am I supposed to talk about no people, places, or things while I'm here? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope that you're having a really good day so far. If you are new here, my name's Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland, and here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this episode of what I call the Thread to Men podcast, I'm gonna sit down and share with you the things I'm currently working on in real time. And then I thought we would once again review some of my favorite knitting and crochet patterns I have saved in Ravelry. We're just gonna explore the internet a little bit. I do have some updates on a couple projects I have begun or planned. I think the first is, I don't know if it's the most or the least interesting, but I did knit a swatch. I haven't blocked it because I'm not happy with the fabric. I'm not gonna use whatever gauge I knit, but I did knit a swatch of fabric using my hand spun. So I had switched midway. I started with size six, so I really wanted to knit a DK weight. I don't know what I was thinking when I didn't go up a size on my whorl. I just continued to spin on the smallest circumference whorl when I spun this sweater quantity and I, I spun a much finer yarn. Um, so I started on a six, and then when I knew I didn't like it at all, which was just a few rows in, I did a couple yarn over knit two togethers to remind myself that I was using a size six. I just did that six times to signify the size six, US size six. And then I switched to a five, and then I did uh, five pearl bumps to remind me that I was using a five, and then I think I switched to a four, and then I started knitting in a size four. Um, I wasn't even happy with the size four yet, and size four is usually the smallest needle I knit with, typically, unless it were a pair of socks where I want a denser, more hard-wearing fabric, something with a tighter stitches per inch, you know, durability. But this is my hand spun swatch. Of course, I'm using the same yarn I've talked about week after week after week that I've had stashed away on my wall here. And, and I decided I'm not knitting Brian a US size three black hand spun sweater. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is knit us a pair of matching shorts. That sounds kind of radical and out there, but I have a pattern in my queue for the longest time I will show you and talk a little bit more about. He had asked for shorts and that kind of sparked the idea to reference this pattern. Of course, I'm gonna modify it slightly so that it'll fit him in a different way, but I think I'm gonna make a pair of hims and hers <laughs> house shorts with a nice tight gauge um, that will be really warm and cozy and durable. But I'm not sure. I think it would also really make a really nice shawl pattern. Um, and I've always needed a very, you know, neutral, darker contrast color. So I might save a few skeins of this to knit, uh, to knit into a shawl. I don't know. I'm I'm really unsure. And so I'm putting the Sweater for Brian on hold for now. I mean, I have knit him a sweater before. He has three gorgeous sweaters in his wardrobe, so he's not really in need of one, so I don't feel that bad. And um, he's not married to the idea either. I think first I will knit his hat, which we can talk about in another video. But I did make a ton of progress on my throw over. So it's one I've been working on for several weeks now. It's a pattern by Andrea Mowry, of course. It's a top-down yoke and I'm knitting it with Harrisville Designs Nightshades yarn. And I'm using a shelter in the very middle, two strands of the bicycle yarn by West Knits 
for the gold and then the third color is my hand spun so this is um the body's almost done i took this to a bonfire bash a little bonfire party last saturday and i got i think like well, the entire body knit. I just have to switch my needle to the ribbing. I probably could have knit the ribbing in full, but I didn't bring the other needle with me thinking I, I would never, I never thought I'd get that much done, but, um, right. So I'm going to knit the ribbing next. And then of course, switch to the sleeves. I might even be able to finish this before January, which would be exciting. Although I do want to get something new on my needles before this is complete. Cause I need something in a state of flow before I finish a very flowy project. So let's explore my favorites and let's find a new pattern to cast on. I have lots of plans for knitting Brian's hat. All right, I have my iPad here. So many of you enjoyed last week's podcast where I shared my favorites on Ravelry and I thought we would continue that since we only got to page four of 33. I have a lot of favorites here on this website. Um, and I'm going to just start randomly. I did save a few more favorites since last week, so I'll start with those. First is a cable twist headband pattern. I think that this one's free. Yes, it is. It's by Destiny Meyer. I thought that this pattern was really cute and simple, but a different twist on the twist headband. And it looks like you use a bulky yarn. So you could hold two strands together of probably a different weight base, you know, whatever you have, you could probably make this work and it's free. So that would be a really great little nifty gifty. And this one's also free. It's called the Flashpoint. I really think this is a neat brioche hat pattern and it's free. So there's no risk, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to buy something that you don't enjoy working. Okay, this is a really interesting Marie Wallen pattern. It's not new. It looks like it came out in 2014, but I love the lace sleeve lace. I love the cable sleeve. It looks like there's an added um, lace collar. Let's see if we can get some more images. That looks like crochet to me. Is that crochet? could be crochet. Hmm. This pattern is called Grasmere. G-R-A-S-M-E-R-E. -E. Oh, I have been wanting to make this pattern for years. It is by James N. Watts. It's the best beret pattern. It's a classic, like a beret. Come on. This is another pattern by Sari Lordland. I think I showed one of her patterns last week. She has so many gorgeous patterns, you guys. I know you're aware. Um, but this one is called uh, Floriste. It has this very pretty lace detail. I just, ugh. Don't you want to eat that up? The only thing I'm not sure about is I don't know if I like the whole drop sleeve and then lace. Thing. I, I feel like I might rather just have stockinette sleeves. Um, if I were to knit this, I would probably do the yoke or, um, yeah, the yoke, the front, the back, whatever. Um, cause it looks kind of like a drop sleeve design. I would probably do that, but do plain sleeves just to keep it simple. I don't think I love the way that the back meets the sleeve. I think I'd rather just see stuck in it. But then from the front, maybe it looks very different. Maybe it looks gorgeous that way. Although, yeah, no, I think I see on the side of the front, there's stuck in it there. So it looks like it would meet stuck in it all the way around. Not to criticize the pattern by any means. I'm sure it is a lovely, lovely knit. Um, but I think that's what I would do. I would knit plain solid sleeves. And this is a fingering weight yarn using a two and a half and a US four. Hmm, 
It always amazes me when two skeins could knit an entire garment. This is a pattern by Nora Gong. It's called Fold Lines and it's like textured stitches. It's very kind of wintry vibes. Very pretty, geometric, cozy, boat neck. Really like that. The um, maker is, who's the maker? I'm not sure. Maybe this is the pattern image? I don't know. They posted that picture from Instagram. And, uh, oh, their handle on Instagram is Taniaho, T-A-N-I-A-H-O. So you could find more of their gorgeous knits there. Okay, I would never make this, no shade. I just, I'm not cut out for it. But this is the Briarly dress. Is that not incredible? What? That's sick. I love the color work detail, the texture is cool. Um, you can buy this pattern. It's um, by Judy Lamb. Just one picture. Um, so I don't even know if that is made for a woman or a girl. Let's see what details. This elegant dress features color work at both the wrist and the collar in a textured skirt. The neckline slit affords casual comfort and ease around the neck. The entire dress is worked from the top down, so fitting can be adjusted if necessary as it is worked. There are no seams. The sleeves are picked up from the armholes and worked top down in the round as well. Interesting. It's made in sizes small, medium, and large. I like to generally see finished garments modeled on an actual person. And I don't think I'll ever knit this skirt, but I think I would like to knit a skirt one day. This one has buttons down the front of it. I'm just not sure if I would actually wear a knitted skirt, to be honest. I don't really dress up during the colder months the same. I just would rather be comfortable. This is an interesting knit. It's called the Poinsettia by Trico Design MCL. It's an all-over lace. I like the central column of bobbles. And I think this would be a really great holiday pattern to wear. But I don't see myself ever knitting a lace front jumper. Um, they're just too breezy and you gotta wear something underneath it. It's not really my style, but I love the look of that. I don't know what this is, but it's called I Did It. And it's a free Ravelry download. What is this? It's called Forbidden Fruit. And it's a pair of mittens with snakes. That's fucking sick. Oh, there's an apple in the palm. It's a little religious imagery here. Like one is whole and the other one has a bite in it. That's really interesting. I don't see myself making those, but I think they're really cool. Um, I wonder what it, the pattern is called. It just says, I did it. That's the name of it. I did it. I'm just picking the patterns right now that are really jumping out to me. This is cute. It's called Growing. There is the designer's name. Very lovely, cocoony, casual, throw over type of cardigan. I love a big kind of boxy cardigan. Oh, these are the shorts that I was thinking about knitting with my hand spun. This pattern's free. Okay, at first I'm sure you don't know what you're looking at. It's kind of like a diaper, but they're a roll over hem high waist short. I discovered these years ago on the Charm of It podcast. She was knitting a pair of these and I thought they were so cute. I saved the pattern, but I never knit it. Here's a little close up shot of the back side. And I love them. I want a pair. I love the um, shaping at the side hip. And this is a completely free pattern. So I want this. It's knit with sport weight yarn. Uh, the yardage that they knit required only 656 yards in the size medium large. I think it's one of those kind of knit to fit sort of patterns. I'm not sure. Um, that might be why it's free because it might not be graded. I don't know. I haven't looked at it in a very long time, but I definitely want to knit a pair of those. 
Here's a shawl pattern. I think this is really pretty. It's by Tammy Gore. Love a Tammy Gore pattern. And it's just really neat stripes, many different colors. This shawl is knit with four colors. You need about 200 yards of three and 150 yards of the fourth. She knit this on a US six. So it's a nice kind of open gauge DK weight. I love that. I wonder if you can hold two strands of fingering together. If you had a single fingering skein, then you definitely have about 200 yards held double. So you could probably take four fingering skeins to knit as DK. Here's a better kind of close up design. I like the texture combinations and the way that the texture kind of plays with the shape here. That really stood out to me a lot. And then that kind of looks like color work, but it's not, it's just the space in those little texture stitches. I really like this color combination too. I, I probably wouldn't choose it for myself. I don't wear a lot of navy. Um, I don't even really wear a lot of red, but you could use any color combination you prefer. Even like a faded situation would be nice because of the stripes. I think that you could really blend two colors. Uh, Tammy Gore, what's this called? This is called Adira, A-D-I-R-A. Let's check out a couple project pages. Wow, not many people have knit this. You should really get on Tammy Gore. She's got a lot of good stuff over here. Okay. Oh, this is a cute little different take on a leaf yoke design. I really like this. This one's called Ramblewood. I like the combination of simple stripes. It's about what, four colors? But you could definitely stash bust with this one and choose whatever you want to knit with as you go section by section. You need about uh, five colors, 200 yards, 240, 130, 120, and 130. So very little yardage. It's worked in a worsted weight. I love a worsted weight shawl design. I have one I wear all the time. I, I wore it in my vlog, I think yesterday and maybe the day before. It's that green, yellow combination one. So I could see myself knitting this, um, but I just, I don't know when, you know? I really like a triangular shawl. Although I do have an asymmetrical triangle shawl, the one I wore yesterday that I like a lot too. I feel like it's easy to wrap around you and stay in place and look really nice, kind of like asymmetrical, um, cause it's an asymmetrical shape. But I do like the versatility of wearing the more symmetrical triangle, like over the shoulders, um, backwards, forwards, whatever you want. Here's another Tammy Gore in my favorites, Shades of Peony. It's another striped shawl design. This one is, looks to be asymmetrical. Those are a few nice shawl patterns. Here's another one. She's got a lot of good ones. This one I think is really pretty and simple. It looks like you could use any color combination you want for this because it's just a simple sort of textured stitch design. Oh, and the little pom-poms are a cute addition. Did you catch that? Those pom-poms are really cute. I'm not even in my favorites anymore. I'm just stuck on Tammy Gore's page. Okay, last one. This one I like a lot too. It's called Hint of Autumn. And I love that there's some lace, but it's not all lace. And there's some stripes, but it's not just about stripes. And there's some texture, but not like too much texture. You know, like it seems like a fun pattern to knit. I see, I see garter stitch in there. So that makes it, you know, somewhat simple throughout parts of it. So Tammy, you're doing a lot over here. I see you. Let me get back on track with my favorites though. Okay, this pattern is out of control. This pattern is called Hild Sweater. And it is a full-on colorwork extravaganza. 
And I don't think I would go with the contrast collar and cuff. The sweater has a lot going on, but I think that that is a really intricate, fun knit. I wonder if it looks as nice not knit in black and white. Let's see if there's a different project here. We can see different color combinations. Looks like a lot of people chose that high contrast, but this one is knit with like a gray and black. I don't know if it'll focus. The image is a bit fuzzy. I do like the gray and black. This one is knit with yellow and white. I do think I like the black and white a little bit more, although I love yellow. You know me, I love yellow. But yeah, that black and white is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Aw, kitty tracksuit. Give me that. This pattern was published in Cat Knits, 20 delightful feline designs for hand knitters. And it has cats on the back, cats on the front. Let's explore this Cat Knits publication. Cat with a sardine can sweater. Oh my God. Give me that. Talk about Intarja. Ooh, this is sick. Um, this reminds me of that sweater that, um, it's like a Gucci sweater or something and someone hacked it. It's called, um, Pangolin. I don't know how to say that. P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N by Anna and Heidi Pickles. It is very circusy, but cute circus. I like that. Here's a little close up. Very cute. How many colors did they use? They don't tell you. I'm gonna count the colors really quick. Okay, like 15 different colors in this sweater. Definitely a stash buster of bulky yarn. So you could probably hold two strands together, maybe fingering, DK, sport. You could probably hold anything that you want together. Um, and you could even like marl it maybe if you wanted to do like a fade situation. Oh my God, I could see someone holding three strands of fingering weight together and do three strands of the same color and then swap one for the next. And then you have a slightly like different shade and then do that again. So you have still one strand of the original color and then swap out one of those for a different color. And now suddenly it's a completely different color, but you still have this sort of blend going where you always have one color transitioning in each thing like that could be really cool but I do like the high contrast it might just look less of a circus and more of like a marled magic moment it doesn't give you a lot of information about the yardage required on Ravelry so it looks like you might have to purchase the pattern to know more information this is interesting Ooh, what okay this is called Synchronicity by Cheryl Faust. It is a striped shawl with a little mosaic knitting at the bottom. And it looks like she's using a variegated yarn that's similar to the contrast color. But I really do like the center stitch pattern down the middle. That's really interesting. I like that a lot. This is pretty. It's called Just Float by Stephanie... Lotvin. I like that. That is pretty. What? Let's learn more about this one. Buy three, get one free. Seven sizes. 35 inch bust up through 63. This is knit with a US 6 fingering weight yarn. Interesting. It's a kind of a big needle for me to knit and fingering. The gauge is 24 stitches and 30 rounds, so whatever needle that takes. I'm guessing she might be a tight knitter, I don't know. Here's a picture of the back. I would probably knit a smaller size. I'd probably knit the, the smallest size, 35 inches, because that neckline is really big and I can start to swim in a very open neckline sweater. I love these little rat patterns. Look at these little rats. Are those not adorable? Oh my god, I used to 
have pet rats in high school, middle school, in high school. I had eight pet rats at once. I had two male rats. One of them died. I accidentally bought a female rat. And two weeks later, I had baby rats. So I constructed these like four foot tall cages and I had four in each cage. And that was really fun. Like enriching the lives of rats is so simple and so easy and so fun and so affordable because they just destroy everything. You can literally turn trash into toys with pet rats. Like they're really, and they're kind of clean. Like they're not like mice. Mice droppings stink so bad. Rats don't smell quite as bad, but it's a lot to keep up with. I don't think I will ever own another rat again, but they are a fun pet. Oh, this is a gorgeous shawl pattern. It's called The Hen Wife by Wolf and Fawn Knits. I love that it's very, very stuck and knitty, but also tons of lace. Tons of lace. Lots of stuck in it. That could be... A really fun knit. It looks like the border has a really pretty lace detail to it. I like that and I like the rustic yarn. It's knit with a DK, $8 pattern. How many yards are needed? 1,367 yards. That's a lot of yards but I guess that's what you, you know, you probably commit that much to a sweater and that's a sweater you can wear every day. So worth it. I can't see myself needing that soon, but I want to say I might make that in my lifetime. I wonder if I have enough yardage with this. Oh, here's another picture. Wow. Look how it stretches out and it's like wrist length. That's incredible. Very big. That is a very big piece. This, the gown cardigan, get out. Irene Lynn, you did that. You did that. I love the cable at the edge. The cable at the edge. Uh, I want that. I want that right now. Here's a shorter version. I think I like the drama of the longer fit. For me. Here's another image of it in in the wild. Very cute. The sleeves rolled up like that. DK weight yarn. 1800 to 2100 yards. It's knit in sizes small, medium, and large, but it is published in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and English. So if it's not diverse in size, it's diverse in language, which is nice. And you know, in those parts of the world, people aren't quite as large. <laughs> Coat of many colors. Girl. Jane. What are you on? That is amazing. Coat of many colors. I don't think I'll make this, but I can appreciate it. I can appreciate that. Wow. Look at it like undone. Looks like there's a little seaming required. That is cool. Okay. I don't even think this is not, this is a maker. This is a version of that pattern. Um, so she used 1890 yards, five and a half skeins of orange gold, six and a half skeins of red purple, and 1.8 skeins of pink. So it looks like a very two-tone heavy design with a little bit of extra. This is the original pattern image. It looks like it's made with just two colors. But the three color, mm-mm. Wow. Wow. In an alternate world, um, if I were a clown, not to, I'm not shading this pattern, um, cause I think it's amazing. But if I were a clown, I would knit this. I would knit the coolest clown wardrobe. I would have this and I would have that other scaly looking one. I would definitely have those in my wardrobe. And you could probably tone this down, but we saw it toned down in the original and it's not quite as striking. That's a cool pattern. This is a really pretty little lace pattern. 
I'm not sure when I'll ever get around to knitting a lace pattern, but I think if I did, I'm going to knit that giant full length kind of square bottom one. That was cool. Oh, hey, Ella. What do you got right here? This is the, I'm not sure how to say that. It's like war with two A's. The water cowl. Very cute. She's so pretty. I wish she could design more. I want her to publish knitting patterns of some of her vintage sweater collection. I feel like, I mean, is that legal? She can do that, right? She like deconstructed the pattern of like classic designs. I feel like I give her permission to capitalize on the history of Shetland for sure. Like she needs to, she needs to create those patterns so that I can follow them and make my own because I really, really would like that. Please, thank you. Ooh, so many good ones coming up. Okay, Susan Crawford. This one's called Kasha. I'm never gonna make that, but I love it. This one is by Marie Wallen. It's called Parsley. And it's this very like Coco Chanel, striped plaid, color work. What? Oh, the Chrysler shawl by Stephen West. Let's just take a look at that really quick. Very cool two color shawl. Is it two? Yeah, it's two colors. I love that it's, it's like geometric, but soft. It's like geometry with curvy soft edges. Really like that. Let's see what, um, oh my God, 300 projects. Some of these patterns have been made like probably on every continent. Oh, here you can see it with like a color changing. <gasps> Hand spun. Stop it. Look. Whoa. That's intense. I think hand spun yarn really shines in a shawl design because you don't need consistency. You can play with texture more, I think, in a shawl. Ooh. This is called the Brom shawl by Jen Peck. Very interesting half pie shawl mosaic knitting. It looks like it's made with three colors. Air and weight yarn, piece fleece worsted. How much yarn do you need? Four skeins of the main color, 760 yards, three skeins of the contrast one, one skein of contrast two and contrast three. That's a lot of yarn. Carrying around nine skeins of yarn, 900 grams of yarn, maybe 800 if you have extra. That's a big ass shawl. I don't think I want a shawl that big. I want, an, I want a big fingering weight shawl. I don't want a big worsted weight shawl, but that's just me. That is just me. I'm a smaller person. I can't carry that much around. But that's just me. You might like that because maybe it like suits you. Ooh, very interesting. Lots of texture. Emily Green, of course. Emily loves her texture. This is spelled K-A-A-R-E. I get caught up on the double A. I don't know how that's supposed to sound. But this is it. Sick. Woolen folk. Oh my God, the luxury. The luxury. Very nice. Beautiful shaped shawl collar, bulky weight yarn, must be quick. 13 skeins of number seven. All right, 1,355 yards for the smallest size. How many, uh, how much is 13 skeins of wool folk going to set you back? 13 to 19 skeins. I'm going to do that math. Okay. I mean, we've seen worse. We've seen worse. Stop it. This is it. Princess line sweater. Okay. So this is, I follow her on Instagram. She's so fucking gorgeous. Look at this. Look at that. Princess line sweater. Let's find the, oh, the original is purple. <laughs> I'm afraid, I'm afraid if y'all know how much I hate purple, you're going to judge me for it. Um, this is cool. It's knit with Rauma Fenelgarn. It's knit, it's published in a book. <gasps> Ooh, 
this book has a lot of this book has a lot of cool patterns and it has cats child's sweater with cat pattern look at that face look at that face so funny cute Aw, look at this little pillow. I want to knit more pillows for my house. This is the Oswald Owl. All right, I need to let my dog out. She's looking at me like, Mom, please let me outside. And we've been going for a while. We made it to page 13. So I'm actually going to explore more patterns on Ravelry because I feel like this inspired me to seek out more gorgeous designs to oogle and ogle. So that's it for this week's episode of the Threads Men podcast. If you made it this far into this week's video, let me know in a comment below with the, hmm, what emoji will we choose this week? Just leave the sparkle emoji. You know, that one's my favorite, sparkle emoji. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for watching. It means so much to me to see you all here. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. No, not on Twitter, not on Twitter, but you can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and that you all take care.